If we consider the meanings of the months of the Islamic calendar, one striking pattern emerges. Nine of the twelve months can be linked to specific seasons. The most obvious of these are Rabi' al-Awwal and Rabi' al-Thani. Both of these months are named after a season, Rabi' or spring in English. The following months are called Jumayd al-Ula and Jumayd al-Akhira. In Arabic, when describing a land as Jumayd, it means that it is arid or parched. Arth Jumayd, qahila la matara fiha. Logically, this corresponds to the period of time with the lowest rate of precipitation, which in Mecca happens during the months of June and July. Notice that it's right after spring. Next comes the month of Rajab. One of the definitions of this word is the following. رجب الكرم سويت سروه ووضع مواضعه من الدعم والقلال والرجب ما بين الضلع والقص. In English, this means adjusting the grape stems and putting them on trellis or in containers. And the second definition is anything from supporting a heavy load to picking. In other words, Rajab describes the process of grape harvest. This makes sense considering the fact that in Saudi Arabia, the seasonal production of grapes begins in mid-July, meaning that it occurs right after the period of parched land. Shaban is the following month. It means scattered. According to historical accounts, it was given this name because during this month, the Arab tribes used to scatter across the land searching for water. Since the people have been experiencing a period of drought, it makes sense that their water reserves would be depleted by this time of year, forcing them to look for more. And then there is the month of Ramadan. Believe it or not, it's also linked to a season. In Arabic, the word Ar-Ramad is the name given to the first rain that falls on hot burning land right before the autumn season. Therefore, Ramadan should fall sometime between September and October. This is very interesting because the equinox occurs around this time of year, which means that during this period, days are neither too long nor too short, an ideal time for fasting. Furthermore, day length would be similar across all the countries in the world. After Ramadan comes Shawwal, which is the month that marks the beginning of breeding season for camels. Biologically speaking, dromedaries start breeding during the rainy season, which in Saudi Arabia happens around November. The names of the three following months do not indicate a particular season. They also happen to be three of the four sacred months in Islam. It's possibly the reason why their names were chosen to describe religious events rather than distinct seasons. Regardless, if we consider the months that came before, Dhul-Qada, dhul and Muharram would occur sometime in December, January, and February, respectively. And finally, there is the month of Safar. In Arabic, Safar means null. This word is also linked to a certain phenomenon known as istiwa al-layli wa nahar meaning the equalization of day length and night length. Now, if we place Safar within the context of all the months that came before and the months that come after, we see that it falls between February and March, which perfectly coincides with the time of the second equinox of the year. Perhaps understanding the names of these months gives a whole new perspective to the Islamic calendar, one that may have been ignored or forgotten for a thousand years. Throughout history, the great majority of civilizations developed different calendars based on 12 months. Some chose to rely on the sun and thus developed a solar calendar. They accounted for the 11 missing days by adding one day to 11 of the months. So they ended up with months that last about 30 or 31 days instead of 29 or 30 days. Others chose to focus on the moon and thus developed a lunar calendar. They did so by disregarding the 11 days and ended up with a year that lasts about 354 days instead of 365 days. Each of these calendars has its advantages and disadvantages. 
The lunar calendar is helpful if you want to follow the phases of the moon. Each month begins with a new moon and has a full moon in the middle. This feature is absent in the solar calendar. On the other hand, the solar calendar is a more reliable way to keep track of seasons because, unlike the lunar calendar, months do not change seasons from year to year. Many people believe that the Islamic calendar is a lunar one. Yet, upon closer examination of the meanings of the Islamic months, it becomes clear that most of the months define distinct seasonal events. But what's the point if the calendar is lunar? What's the point of calling a month Rabi' al-Awwal, first spring, if it can fall in spring, summer, autumn, or winter depending on the year? So it's possible that the Islamic calendar is actually not lunar. Could it be solar? Well, probably not, because the Quran tells Muslims to rely on the phases of the moon to organize their calendar. They will ask you concerning the new moons, say they are appointed times for the people and the pilgrimage. But if it's neither a solar calendar nor a lunar calendar, then what is it? Well, there is a third alternative. The Luni Solar Calendar. This type of calendar has the advantages of both the lunar and the solar calendars. It follows the moon phases while keeping months and seasons in sync. Moreover, it relies on both the sun and the moon, just like it is suggested in the Quran. He is the cleaver of daybreak and has made the night for rest and the sun and moon for calculation. That is the determination of the exalted in might, the knowing. So how does the Luni solar calendar work? During a year, there are approximately 12 months and 11 days. So the first year, the calendar is 11 days short. The second year, it is missing 22 days. But a little before the third year, the missing days accumulate to 30. This is equivalent to the duration of a month. Therefore, a leap month is added to compensate for the past missing days. Careful, the leap month is not the nasi. So a luni solar calendar is made up of regular years and leap years. The regular years have 12 months. The leap years have 13. Wait, doesn't this contradict verse 936? Let's see. The number of the months with God is 12 in the book of God, the day that he created the heavens and the earth. Notice the wording in this verse. Does it say there are 12 months in a year? Because if it said that, then the concept of leap years containing 13 months would indeed contradict this verse. But it doesn't say that. It says, the number of the months with God is 12 in the book of God. So the calendar must be composed of 12 months. But this doesn't necessarily apply to the year. Most years will be regular and have 12 months, but some will be leap years and have 13. This doesn't mean that the calendar has 13 months, since the leap month is not actually an extra month, but simply the accumulation of missed days. It's interesting to see that most nations that follow a luni solar calendar don't have a special name for the added leap month. For instance, in the Chinese calendar, the leap month simply takes the name of its preceding month. So even though they add a leap month, their calendar only recognizes 12 different months. Now here is the intriguing part. The Quran is a wise book that often contains mysterious numerical patterns. For instance, the word shahr or month was mentioned 12 times in the Quran. The word yawm or day was mentioned 365 times. Lunisolar calendars are based on a pattern called the metonic cycle. It repeats every 19 years during which 12 are regular years and 7 are leap years. A simple mathematical demonstration is available in the description for those who are interested. When you study the Quran, you see that the word sena, or year, was mentioned a total of 19 times, 12 times in its plural form, sinin, and 7 times in its singular form, sena. What a coincidence! And notice the subtlety of this. When we follow a luni solar calendar, 12 regular years tend to come together in groups, while the leap years always come individually. So the fact that the plural form was used 12 times and the singular form 7 times seems like a very odd coincidence indeed. And yet, there it is.